as it t- says up there, we are talking about a Royal Rumble match. The women's inaugural first ever 2018 Royal Rumble match. Now, this comes off the backdrops of basically women <laughs> who haven't really had opportunities and times to shine over the many years of wrestling, like just basically being restroom breaks or eye candy or uh, or just like just something to fill time on the show. This gives them the opportunity of all throughout the generations of women's wrestling or of WWE women's wrestling to finally eradicate the Divas division. I mean, this is the first year we've gotten the money in the bank and the hell in the cells and all the first time evers. And so on Raw, Stephanie announced that there will be a 30-woman over-the-top battle royal at the 2018 Royal Rumble. So there have been two matches. Jamal, what are your thoughts? What were your original thoughts when this was announced? It was about month of flipping time. Yeah, man, it's just a whole lot of... At that time, the women's roster was bolstering some of, like... Not the best talent, but enough talent to be featured on television. Like, I was more interested in the women's matches and not on some, like, perv stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was I was more interested in their actual match match. And they were having better matches than some of what the guys were doing. And it was a shame that, you know, for years, like decades, um, you know, even in the back of, like, a Lundra Blaze and and Bull Nicanos and you know yeah. uh, the the Jacklins of the world the the um, Ivories of the world the Chinas like they didn't really put no respect on the women's division and it was finally like you know other companies at the time was doing it better you know Impact Wrestling we we talked Impact Wrestling uh, a few weeks back um, how. You know, they were really the revolutionaries of women's wrestling and stuff like that. Um, Stardom was doing their thing. Uh, there were shimmers, there was shine. There was like so much different things going on other than the big WWE company. So for them to do something like this, it was long overdue. And I was pretty stoked about it. I think 2018 also, um, like, you know, I was just a big proponent of women everything that year. Uh, there hey, was one, Jamal the feminist. Well, not not even. It's just I like, mean, in a good way. In a good way. It's not. I, I, I'm just saying. It's just like you know, uh, FIFA dropped women for the first time in 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 their video game. Um, uh, NBA did it with EA NBA Live. They had the, the WNBA featured in a in a video game for the first time. So it was just nice to see that this women's revolution happening in real time and it was literally about time i was like they have 30 mother they have 30 women they have yeah, 30 they, women. Yeah. they can do this they can do this and so we are into entering this royal rumble with like okay we can do it but i'm going to tell you my initial thoughts on this i didn't like it i didn't like it and it had nothing to do with women at all it had nothing to do with women's wrestling at all i my favorite match, my favorite gimmick match in all the world is the Royal Rumble match. And I felt it was completely special that I only get this match once a year. And yes, I know they had the greatest Royal Rumble. I hated that one too. But it's once a year, 30 men over the top Royal Rumble. And I didn't want it to just be, oh, no, I got two of them on the same show. They're both 60 minutes. I don't know if they can pull this off and make me still enjoy both rumbles. So we have the men's rumble that happened this year uh, where Shinsuke wins. I honestly, I'm going to tell you something. Can't remember a single thing that happened in that match. It started the Royal Rumble. It started the show. And I immediately went, ah, why? This should be the main event. And I think maybe, you know, just young stupid markets is five years ago. (laughs) It's not that young, much younger. But it was still going like, ah, I don't know how I feel about this. Looking, you know, hindsight, looking hindsight, they made the right decision because of what happens at the end, but we'll get to that uh, later yeah. on. I feel like I, I know I was completely wrong on the issue, and I know I'm, I was like, I was like, dang, how could I, I was just going back to my mindset, going like, this isn't going to work. 
two rumble matches. It ruins the rumble. It's too much rumble. That's too much rumble. But you know the way they balance the show of rumble first, or you know how they did Money in the Bank one match first, and then the one thing. It really like balances out. It kind of clears it out. And I was really impressed that they put this together, and that really came out to a really good match, and that it main evented the show and felt like a main event. And in fact, it felt like a more bigger deal than the actual men's rumble. Even though Shinsuke won, it was a fine rumble. But it's just not one that I remember, but I actually remember the 2018 Women's Inaugural Royal Rumble. Well, um, there's plethora of reasons why you would remember something like that. Because, like, again, it, it's the first one in WWE's history to happen, right? Yeah. Um, not only that, like, We've had like what it was like 15 women that was featured on either Raw, SmackDown, or NXT at any given time. The other 15 motherfuckers was not known. We did not yeah. know who was coming. And now and that's the best part about the rumble of like who's coming out next. And so, I think they capitalized so much in this match on who's coming out next because there has been a many, a plenty of women who have wrestled in the WWE who have never got their due. They never got TV time. They never got to do anything. They never got to do cage matches, ladder matches. Uh, all they came out and do was bra and panty matches or some garbage wrestling match that had nothing to do with it. That'd be like two minutes. Pillow and fights. some of them were actually really talented. They were talented. Like, you know, your leaders, your uh, Michelle McCool's, your Eve Torres. All this, all through the year, there were actually people. Natty, of course, went through all of this from the beginning. They're, and Beth Phoenix, they're all these talented women who never got their due. And I felt like this brought everything full circle. And it didn't make the past the right of the way they to be treated women, but it did feel like this is a new era, all right? This is women empowerment. This is nice for wrestling. This is a good moment to have that anything you can do, I can do better. That's what the old Michael Jordan commercial used to say for Gatorade. And I felt like they did it. And even though, and they did better than the men, because there's a lot of stuff that happens in this match that you just go like, damn, that, that was a women's, that's one of their things. That's what it, that's what they got. So, Jamal, what are some of the moments or highlights do you remember from this um, Women's Royal Rumble of 2018? Well, let's start off with the very beginning, the the number one, number two entrance. Like, you know, when 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 Sasha Banks and and uh I believe it was Bailey, Bailey it was started, Becky Lynch. It was Becky Lynch. It was Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. Um they they both started the match, pioneers of you know, the four horse women to future like you know they that like this is the future main eventers of wrestlemania eventually like you know like if we're yeah. looking hindsight back at it like wow like yeah that started, never would have considered this that started that started something there both uh sasha banks who's mercedes monet now and becky lynch eventually yeah. after this match go on and main event wrestlemania in their own right and their own respects with like, you know, and it's, it's kind of due to this match. Like, this was uh, the, I think this was the, excuse me, first big one, right? Like, it was the first big woman's, like, thing. I'm going to say, at the moment, it's the biggest one they had. And I, and I believe there it were is, previous pay-per-views that had women made events. No, I but think this felt bigger. This, I think that this set the precursor for them to start doing, like, oh, okay, put them in elimination chambers. Oh, Put them in money in the banks. No, they had all that first. <laughs> they, they did do all of that. Yeah, all of that was first. That was all uh, a few months ahead when they were talking about that. Um, the one thing that oh, wait, wait, yeah, the... yeah, because um, Carmelo had one. She had money in the bank already. Yeah, and the so women's we, we... The women's title and all that stuff like that. I'm but smacking. this one felt like the biggest. Like it was like, oh, this is because they're the, serious. The winner of Royal Rumble main events. WrestleMania. And at this point, it blurs the line of who won the Royal Rumble. Was it Shinsuke or is it Oscar later? Or who gets the main event? And it kind of puts in your mind like What's the bigger match? Char yeah, Charlotte and Oscar can main event WrestleMania. Which, you know, they don't do to the next year when, you know, Ronda Rousey and them do it. But if this kind of begins that like that thought of, oh shit, they might do a women's WrestleMania main event. 
Oh, interesting start to the match of which I enjoyed Becky and uh, Sasha's opening run. It starts with uh, Stephanie coming out to do commentary, which was funny terrible. when you go back and listen terrible. to the commentary. It's so bad. It's so bad oh, on every terrible. different level of commentary. You have uh, Alexa Bliss sitting ringside and Charlotte sitting ringside, both of them with this face of, Mm. And in, in later interviews, I wish I wasn't champion during this time. That's what they were both like. They were like, "Damn, it really it, sucks to be the champ right now." That's exactly <laughs> what Charlotte said because I looked up, you know, uh, old interviews and stuff with this. I did my research, Jafar, and Charlotte said this is her favorite Royal Rumble ever, even though she was not in it, and and it hurts because she was looking at it going like, "Huh, like." I should be in there, but they are fighting for what I want. But I'm here, but I should be a part of this. I should be a part of the first. I'm Charlie Flair and all that. And she's gets to see every other horsewoman, every other woman uh, in the history of WWE, probably the best collection of like the, the top women ever in their company. Although there are people missing um uh, in their company and you just go like god damn, charlotte should have probably been in this one or bliss should have been in this one but they're not because they're the champion which makes sense it makes sense but it does kind of hold things back anyway the first legend to come out will be lita she comes out to a huge pop because it's lit no one it was once lita came out it was like oh shit what are we doing how many people are going to just show up in this match with her, with her vans and all that nonsense she looked sloppy she looked like sloppy joe up in the hey. ring you know she, she did all right because we, we, we put the peaky blinders on because it was like oh it's lita it's the women's royal rumble we we really put blinders on in this match this is why it's like my my 100th match like you know what i'm saying <laughs> No, Lita came out and did like, you know, she did some stuff and mostly got the big reaction. She came out, later would do a moonsault, which I was concerned. I was like, can she still do a moonsault? And like, <laughs> it's been a while. It has been a long time. Um, you know, Kyrie Zane was in this after winning the winning the uh the women's tournament. I forget what it's actually called. The breakout was it the breakout? The breakout tournament? it was like the breakout tournament. She beat Shayna Baszler as a matter of fact. Like, yeah, so. he beat her, and then um, they sold the hell out of Kyrie's aid. And uh, Lita was talking about how when Kyrie landed her punch into her, she was like, I wonder why I retired because Kyrie does that slight dive. And when you see that elbow hit Lita, it's like, God damn, she, she has got so much smoked. force. She got smoked by Kyrie. I mean, Kyrie yeah. Hojo's elbow is it's it's insane. As hell. It's stiff as hell, does her elbows in, and then you eventually get like. Tori Wilson comes out, and you get all these like Jacqueline, um, uh, Molly Holly. You get all these women coming out, Beth Phoenix, and you know, it was a good collection of like just the history of the former women's champions, Michelle McCool and stuff. Michelle McCool probably had of all the legends coming back the best showing. Uh, and they did treat each legend with respect. Like they came out there, and each one, and I noticed, got at least one elimination on their way in there. Uh, or and like they start, they get one, and then they probably get out, and then another one come in, or they, you know, it was a good rotation of like keeping people in. People filled up, like it was like, oh, Nia Jax was in it, dominant as hell, beating everybody. Else. It was a they, really they, they epic. jump, they jump poor, they jump poor girl. They 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 had to though because they had to, they had to. She poor was the irresistible force. Any, any big match that she's a part of, she's just getting smoked and jumped. By everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, also, this was the first time, or one of the first times, I believe it may have been the first time, uh, that the NXT champion actually showed up on the main our main roster show where Ember Moon showed up fresh off her match with Shayna Baszler, where she's beat up and broken. Through the shit. skin of Ember Moon. AKA Athena's teeth that she win that match. I remember watching that takeover like it was yesterday. I was so heated. I wanted <laughs> she to win so bad. And I was heated. And then she had her little her little injury or whatever. Now she came in there. They were like, you know, selling up the injuries. Like, oh, she was injured, but you know, she she didn't want to miss the day and and all this other like, you yeah. know, hyping her up just for her to get launched. 
out in October <laughs> hitting the freaking mat. Yo, I was heated, bro. Yeah, she got her, she got the uh the eclipse in the one arm eclipse, and while she was in there, but and uh it was oh like they told a really good story in that little bit of because Asuka had entered the match as well of the rivalry between Asuka and Ember Moon as Asuka was still undefeated on the main roster. Ember her, her entire career or basically NXT was chasing Asuka and Asuka just beat her ass until Asuka retired from NXT. And then they had that rivalry and Asuka in Eliminator with the, uh, her injured arm and it was just like a lot of intertwining storylines going on. You had the, the stare off between Becky, I mean not Becky, Mickey and Trish from like renewing their rivalry. Trish talking mad shit and the match to Becky like I whooped your ass seven times. Yeah, but WrestleMania 22, man. WrestleMania 22. I remember that too. Like, yo, it was, it was crazy. It was nice reliving and seeing some of these legends. Some of them still got it. Some of them looking sluggish. Some of them looking sloppy, messed up. And then freaking, um, when, when did Ivory come out? Ivory came out. Ivory did not enter this rumble. Um, this was This was next year then. Yeah, she would have entered the next year. Like, yeah. there's a lot of people who you thought would be in this one, but I was like, oh, they're not in this one. And uh, so, cause when we, when I went back, I was like, oh, because I remember, I was like, oh, Ivory comes out. Like, I always remember, but it was like, oh, no, Ivory was in this. It's a lot of, a lot of mis- misremembering and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. Um, The big spot in the match that I think was probably spot of the night. And I think this was the end of the coffee spot at this point because Kofi had been doing, you know, the rumble spot of, like, falling off the ring and finding weird ways to get back in. You're, and, talking, you're talking about the, the Impact Women's Champion doing what she does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's, uh, so Kofi does his spot every year. And Morrison would be probably one of the originals of, like, Oh, I mean, they didn't get eliminated, so they found a way back to the ring and stuff like that. And I felt like when Naomi did it, as good of a job as she did, of like they carried her, she fell into the ground, she tight roped over, used the chair, walked on the chair, did a handstand, got to the thing. I was like, there, she left nothing left for anybody else to ever do. It was that, and it was that good and impressive. For and then she got eliminated right away. But it was like the spot of like, fuck. And like I can imagine Kofi watching that going like the fuck can I do now? What can I do now? Now that she's done everything and that she continued to do even the next year after that. And it was like he was competing at this point. And it's like it becomes even more hard. And you got Ricochet doing stuff, and it just not became the Kofi spot. It just became who's the most athletic person in the company that can figure out a way back. And it just became impossible for Kofi to probably top it. To the point where he tried even in the previous Royal Rumble, but he ended up botching it. And then I think the year before he failed as well. It's the just pan- that much harder. The, the, the pancake spot was stupid, but. <laughs> After port pancakes. He right. never touched the ground. He never touched the ground. Sure. They were in the heart of the pancake air. Pancakes. But so many different like moments in this match. You even had the reunion of Natty and Beth. Uh, hugging it out after the elimination of Nia Jax, but it does conclude with the Bellas, uh, one Nikki eliminating Brie, turn on her, and also they turned on Sasha <laughs> after Sasha turned on Bailey. Man, Sasha was the <laughs> Iron Woman of that match, bro. Yeah, she was in there for 54 minutes of a 58 minute match. I'm assuming she's the one that caused the match from beginning to end. Because if you listen to anything Sasha does, he's like, no one calls a match I'm in. So she forced herself in there for like 60, almost down there 60 minutes from number one. And wasn't just lying around. She took everybody's moves. She was always active. Um, there, there, She disappeared for a little bit, maybe like in somewhere in the middle, doing like the legend stare-offs and stuff like that, which she really didn't have much to do because they were just uh, sucking up the crowd and attention and all that. So but Sasha was there, got eliminated. It's down to the Bellas uh, and Oscar. And at this moment, I believe everybody in this arena and watching at home was like, please don't let the Bellas win. Don't let Nikki Bella win this. Any win. one of them, because we would not hear the end of it. We thought they were fucking incorrigible then. Imagine if Nikki Bella won that fucking Royal Rumble, dog. Yeah. And 
she was the perfect person. To the funny part about Nikki Bella and Brie is the reactions from the crowd was not about Brie and Nikki. When Nikki came out, they were singing John Cena's <laughs> on her face. At the time, her fiance. Such a waste. Such and then a- when Brie came out, nothing but yes chants throughout the arena for Brian Danielson and all that. And she just hijack, came back from getting the match. having a baby. Hijack the match. Yeah. This is her first match back since having a baby. This is Nikki's first time in the ring since her neck injury. And uh about Nikki's neck. I don't want to hear nothing about Nikki's neck. I'm 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 still mad at her, bro. Still <laughs> mad. Um uh, Oscar pulls her off the ring with the leg kick, wins the rumble. Uh the two champions into the ring, surround Asuka. Pyro's going off. Which was then... a big deal, which was a big deal because again, Asuka wins the Royal Rumble match. She has not lost a match in yeah, WWE. Still. Yet and the Royal Rumble would would have been clearly like okay she lost one no she wins this motherfucking thing and she continues the fucking streak and you're just like who the fuck is she going to choose at yeah. WrestleMania who's ready for Oscar at this point and it was like oh shit she's steamrolled through that one and having real match this is I will say this the Undertaker streak is a different type of streak but Oscar may have the greatest undefeated streak of any wrestler. Just in the time from the NXT to the main roster that any wrestler has ever had, male or female, for the simple fact that she wasn't doing Goldberg squash matches out there or what Jay Cargill was doing in her streak or whatnot, just beating tomato cans. Asuka was having real banger matches to continue her streak. Against, and, qualified, against, yeah. against qualified competition and even put in predicaments of triple threats, fatal four ways, uh, hardcore matches, last woman standing matches, all types of different matches, including the women's Royal Rumble match, the inaugural one, just to win. Excuse me, just to win that motherfucker too. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah, Oscar. Like, and what was even more surprising about Oscar Wedding, and this is just me looking at the previous Rumble that just happened a few hours beforehand. Just gave just one. Japan. I don't know if we're giving it to two Japanese wrestlers. Just in general, I don't know if they do that. If WWE yeah, would do actual, that. Actual J- Japanese wrestlers. Like somebody, yeah. um, uh, I remember they were like, oh, but somebody Japanese won before Yokozuna. I was like, that nigga Samoa. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that motherfucker Samoa. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not Japanese. So, yeah. yeah. And so we have that. And I go, like, oh, wow, this is different and then whatever and then Rhonda comes out to the biggest ovation of the night stole the show stole stole, the like show. came out there the crowd's already chanting Rhonda we want Rhonda in the middle of the rumble and like because it was already in the know that she was gonna be a part of WWE they, and be at the Royal Rumble but they didn't know if she was gonna be in the Royal Rumble and she goes out there and I I mean, she, she's pointing at the WrestleMania side and that's how the show ends. Stephanie looks at her with anger, setting up that feud, like, oh, I still hate you for breaking my arm at 31. I I halfway thought that Ronda Rousey would be in this Royal Rumble match. Yeah. You know, not knowing not knowing anything about anything, I halfway thought that Ronda Rousey would have been the one to ultimately either come in and be part of the match or win the whole thing or whatever not, but yeah, she does that later down the line. Yeah, uh, and, uh, the crowd support, and you know, I go back to this time, and I go, the like, even with the pop of the reaction that she got, she's famous UFC, whatever. Um, I think that crowd didn't understand that she was going to be a natural in the ring because her first match was WrestleMania, and it was like, oh shit, she's actually wrestling. <laughs> like she wrestled more than Kurt in that tag match they had at uh, Mania Thirty Four. And it was like this big deal. Everybody just like it was, it was impressive. It was an impressive debut of like it kicked off basically that you know the celebrity slash any outsider coming in and having actual good matches. Talking about your bad bunnies, Logan Pauls in the future, and Thank even you. Stephen Amell. Stephen Amell. Stephen Amell Pat McAfee ran through fire so that way everybody else could run through water. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was all these people, and I feel like Ronda was the first, like, good celebrity, or really good celebrity. Like, Stephen Amell was good. 
But he, I don't know if he, uh, he was actually at the Ronda, to be honest. Oh, no, no, no. No, this is. I got my years mixed up. I got my years mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. He was before. He was before. Stardust, because Stardust Stardust was was still before. Yeah. So, and it was just like, oh, okay. Where are we going with this main event? Where was the main event going? Because it was a lot of confusion after that. So, Jamal asked this question. Did the right person win this match? Did Asuka have been the winner? Um, hindsight's 20, uh, 2020 vision and stuff like that. Asuka was the correct choice to win this match. It it was a good buildup for her. Like you said, the greatest undefeated streak in pro wrestling history, no matter what company, no matter what gender, no matter what is like, you say what you want. The Royal Rumble is a match that you're damn near guaranteed to fucking lose. And she didn't fucking lose it. <laughs> so, yeah. And the run that she was concurrently on to have to relinquish, not lose, but relinquish the NXT um, Women's Championship, and then to continue to go on Raw and continue winning matches convincingly and having bangers the, to go all the way to WrestleMania to wrestle Charlotte Flair and, you know, one of one of the greatest women's matches in WrestleMania history just to lose. But, you know, the right woman did win the Royal Rumble match. Yeah. I, I'm for Oscar winning. And it, it did kind of like, it was uh really nice to see that, you know, it felt like, I'm trying to think of the right word, but it felt like it was like the WWE has grown up at this moment. I feel like at this, like, I'm pretty sure it's a better word, but they grew up in this moment in which they had two Japanese wrestlers win. They had a women's main event and a Royal Rumbles match. And it just seemed like they added all these other elements to the show that was like, it's equal opportunity for everybody if you come to WWE. And Everybody has talent, a- future talent. Like, come to WWE. Look what we're showcasing here. And uh, look at these women wrestlers of all colors, race, sizes, or whatnot. We have everything in this match, and the winner wasn't a typical Vince McMahon blonde. That normally would be the winner of all these matches or whatnot. This is Oscar, a completely different, well, one of the most respected and best wrestlers of all time, won the first uh, Rumble. Um, even though it didn't work out well for her at WrestleMania, I still would. I, I don't think I would change it. I think it's still Oscar. Maybe I would change who she's in there at the end with instead of the Bellas. Maybe I'll make make it Naya or something. But I mean, like, give it give it to Sasha even too. Like you know, um, have, have the I mean the final four was okay. You know you can deal with that. But have them eliminate the old and continue on with the new because they were representing the new, the now, yeah. the the concurrent. Like you know, if there's one thing I would change about that, then the final two would have been. Uh, the the Sailor Moon freaking uh Sasha Banks aka Mercedes money 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 hmm. but you know Sailor Moon or Wonder Woman I couldn't tell it was like, Wonder you know, Woman. I, 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 it could be either one it, it could was be either one. the way the outfit was it could be either one actually because when you said Sailor Moon I was like maybe it's but I think it was Wonder Woman it, could it was be Wonder, Wonder Woman Wonder Woman Wonder Woman <laughs> <laughs> now my question to you Jamal is this the greatest women's Royal Rumble match of all time, in your opinion? No, I'm going to give that one. Um, it's a toss-up between Becky's win and Rhea Ripley's win. And the reason why I say this is because with Becky's win, you obviously know what the ramifications of Becky's win was. I know that Lana was supposed to be in that Becky spot or – you know, Becky took over Lana's spot to then eventually win the Royal Rumble to eventually then main event WrestleMania, which makes that mean a whole Damn lot. It, Lana could have main event at WrestleMania. Like you think you think about this, like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> CJ CJ Perry or whatever not. But <laughs> then you look towards uh the Rhea Ripley win, right? The first and only woman to come in what what she was number two, number one, number one. Number one. She came in number one and did the Shawn Michaels thing. Yeah. She's the only woman to do that. Although I 
as much as you say that's your number one, that's that's probably my number two. I I said I said it's it goes between Becky and and yeah. And I don't have Becky there either. Oh. I have Bianca's win over Rhea Ripley's. The one that she went on to WrestleMania fight Sasha in was the better finish because I didn't know because it came down to Rhea versus Bianca at the end. At this point, you don't know who's going to actually come up. These are two very young and two of the most talented wrestlers you have. And you could have saw it either way. And each time, and they had like a, I think it felt like, I maybe remember this, so I felt like maybe five, six minutes of an actual wrestling match basically at the end. They and then the each time they kept falling over, you believe this person's getting eliminated, this person. And then when uh, Bianca eliminated the big celebration, and I think someone dropped a baby, <laughs> but that may have been mania. I might be missing it wrong. But it felt like the bigger moment. But this was a really good rumble. But it set the stage up for the other to come out the other ones to have all types of like women in this match. So my final question is, is there anybody you would add to this match that wasn't there? I know we brought up ivory earlier, but is there anyone else you would have added to the match? Um, can we, can we do living or dead? Because God, I would you have can do loved, living or dead. I would have loved China to be part of that. I would have yeah. loved to see, I would have loved to see Mae Young take her old ass on, or <laughs> Moolah bring her old ass in there just to do the the, you know, whatever they're gonna do spot, and then yeah, you know, um, yeah, man, like there's Gail Kim. I would I would love to see uh, Gail Kim part of that inaugural, you know, being that she was a real pioneer in women's wrestling yeah. she continues to do so and impact wrestling and stuff like that um it was very nice to see uh or, or it had been very nice to see um yeah man it's yeah there's a lot there's a lot like you know china wasn't alive for it and never got her opportunity but she would have been a perfect fit uh Paige, who was injured at the time could not wrestle so she could not be in it and just re got injured again at this moment so she was out, should have been it. AJ Lee would have been another person because she helped push, try to help advocate to push the women's wrestling further and whatnot. And um, uh, like you said, Gail Kim, Awesome Kong, stuff like that. People who have like wrestled for years and just never got their due. And because the crowd wanted that. That's what the crowd wanted with 15. The problem is you gotta take 15 out. And you know, I would have took out probably selling in the bill, even Mandy Rose at this point. Cause yeah, they were Take out, take out this iteration of Mandy because the yeah the they, they, they weren't doing anything. Yeah, toxic attraction Mandy would have been like you know. Yeah, that's a it's a different it's a different beast a different B trigger in that one. Although all she did in the Royal Rumble in this one was do the B trigger like eighteen different times. It was like oh, this is your move. This is your move, uh, Mandy. You've been watching Kenny Omega matches. You've been watching a lot of Omega. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'm packing food our show for today. Tune in next time for the next 100 Oh, if you do disagree with any of these messages, please put it in the comments below. 